Hello, StarCraft fans. We are back into another match of the round of 16 of the StarCast TV Star League. This time, I'm flying solo because, you know, everybody's favorite matchup is TVT to watch, right? So that's why we're going to be here just solo casting it. But I actually think that this is going to be a good matchup. We've got Royal, ASL champion, going up against Haya. And even though I think it's a bit of a mismatch here, I think Royal's a big favorite, I do think Haya has a good shot versus Royal. And the reason I say that is Haya is very dangerous. He has a lot of different builds. Like, he's willing to one-base you, not just in TVT, but also TVP. I know he likes to play race. So because of that, not only could we have some interesting games, we could have some short games because somebody might be all in. And because of that, uh, you know, Maybe Haya can actually sneak out a win versus Hi uh, versus Royal here. So with that said, we're looking at the bracket so far. We've got Snow versus Sock, Light versus JYJ, and Mini versus Barracks remaining. Uh, I really have high hopes for the last remaining matches. Light versus JYJ, that's going to be a banger. TVT, ASL Champ versus ASL Champ, Mini versus Barracks. Barracks is very good. Uh, every time he's in ASL, I have high hope for him, but never really gets past the round of 16. So now maybe that it's online, maybe he can get some better results. But really, I've got my eye on Snow versus Sock. And the reason I say this is if Snow gets past Sock, you know, he's got all Terrans remaining most likely. It's either going to be Royal or Haya, Light or JYJ, and then potentially Barracks. And Snow, he's a killer versus Terran. I think this is the dream bracket for him. So he could maybe make magic happen this season. We'll have to find out though. Again, today is Haya versus Royal. Our first ban, or um, sorry, here we go. We've got the maps. So Ver Vermeer was picked by Royal. No shocker there. Standard map. And then Retro also picked by him. Standard map. I'm a little surprised that out of all the maps, Haya just wants to play standard and picks Polypoid second. I think for him, he could find success on weird maps like Luna, even though that's kind of standard, you know, it is an old map. Maybe he could come up with something fancy there. Uh, and, oh, actually, sorry, Royal Ban Luna. Uh, I guess uh, what I meant was Sandstorm there. Uh, Sandstorm is one of those maps, you know, based on Blue Storm where all ends are very strong. So I'm a little bit surprised to see that type of ban from him, but it is what it is. We've got four or three standard maps, and with all that said, I'm ready to just get into our first game. So let's do that right now as we get into Vermeer, Royal versus Haya. Okay, in the top left position are Blue Terran. It is Haya, and in the bottom right, we have our yellow Terran, one of the former ASL champions. It is Royal. Now, unfortunately, last season in the ASL, uh, even though Haya, I think it was Haya. Nope, I think that back, it was later. Sorry, I'm misremembering there. But Haya, he is a very strong player overall. If you guys have any interest in watching some of his border style games, trying to think i think the map that i'm thinking of is called triathlon he played a map he played a game on triathlon which is a very unique map versus i think it was isu it was definitely versus a protoss he ended up going race there so if you're somebody that's willing to pull out race versus protoss and it be a one base type of play you know that he's going to have some type of special build plan for tvt also we've got the depot coming down for both sides neither player going for eight racks i think if we're going to see an eight racks in this series the map to pull it out on would be probably retro. Now, the question to me right now is, will anybody go gasless? I think if somebody's going to go gasless, it's definitely going to be leaning towards Royal. I guess also Haya could play towards his image. Even I know Haya's kind of an aggressive player, can pull out all types of builds. Maybe he could get away with gasless. But as I say that... Not only is he not only going to get away with Gasless Expand, he's getting away with King CC. And Royal's actually going to be the one to go for 12 gas. So what I thought could be quick games, actually this game could be quite long. It's going to be cross-spawn. 
the likelihood that this scout gets scouted first is not too high. That means that Royal probably not going to be able to punish this. And Hyas got pretty much the dream opener. TVT, 14cc, I think is just super ridiculously strong. If you can't do any damage, you're just down six workers pretty much for the entirety of the game. There's no way to really recover. And Terran players have a lot of options to go for as a follow-up. I've seen players go two port Wraith, players go two port or two fact tank. Some players get real balls and go four fact nonstop vulture. Uh, it is really hard to punish and a lot of options uh, to follow up with. The Royal actually did go for quite a quick scout this time. I think it was something like a 13 scout. So he scouts the top right, sees nobody's there, and he will find Aya top left relatively quickly. So maybe he could transition this into a, an, an all-in, but he has pulled off of gas for quite a while, and he will see the bad news that this is a 14cc, and I can tell you that he is not happy about this. We do have, I think, that's a Rallied Marine across the map. Now, this can be annoying to deal with. Of course, you're not going to kill anything with this, but you could force SCVs off the line, just have lost mining, force a bunker when you don't want to build it. One of the intricacies with 14cc is, of course, you don't know what the opponent's going for, so you're going to have to blindly build that bunker faster than your factory. You can see higher right now, he's got 100 gas, just now reaches the threshold for the minerals required for the factory and puts it down. And we do have the command center follow-up from Royal. Now, I've thought about this quite a bit. You know, in Terran versus Protoss, you can just put on an add-on and go for mines and do some type of mine contain. And, you know, technically you can do that versus Terran also. Of course, the mines aren't gonna hit vultures, but at least it will get vision for you. But we don't see that this game. And instead, he's doing the build that I know and love. It's one fact, one port. But this can be a dangerous build because two port wraith is a common opener after 14 CC. So if you just run in there with one wraith and you know this guy has gone two port wraith, you could run into two wraiths and just instantly lose them. And because of that, actually going two port wraith. So now all of a sudden, I like this a lot more. However, this puts him mega all in we do have the triple factory for Haya. if this is an armory this is just a complete blind counter and that could be nope it's a depot so for now royal could rack up a lot of kills with this double port play he's also going cloak i love it not only is high gonna have to get the armory now but he's also gonna have to get the academy and he has not scouted at all that vulture killed the scv immediately he doesn't even know if this guy has an expansion uh, but I guess that could also backfire because since you don't know what Terran actually has, if you want to be safe, you need that academy. You need that armory. And I think that's going to be the armory uh, at top left. And that's exactly what it is. But no academy just yet. So these these rays could rack up a decent amount of damage. Now, something to point out was the factory lift for Royal. And the intention here is to wall off completely with the bunker in case he gets all in by a vulture counterattack. So I like that as a move, but it will give away his strategy. If Haya was to poke in here and see that this factory is there, he's going to know immediately this can only be right. And look at the academy. It's coming down. It's not going to be in time for the first couple rays, but I think this is actually an okay timing. And the reason I say that is Wraith, DPS, not great to say the least so these two race yes they will be annoying i expect them to kill you know six seven scvs but that will only just even up the scv count it's not going to put Aya down in the dumps those there are those rays and he's going to come in here un perturb i heard an unload of a couple of the marines now this could get a little annoying can he deny the scv building the academy so far, he's going to get that one. Take out the Marine. I think that Academy is close to being done. The Vultures poked in and saw the bad news that he's not going to be able to get in there and do anything. Do anything. Comsat coming down. Engineering Bay coming down. So far, it seems like something like four or five SCVs have died. So, pretty good damage so far. Six, maybe. Seven. Okay, so we're starting to get to the number that I was expecting to get which is about six or seven SCVs. Now we're getting to eight, maybe 10. There are four 
race here, but a single scan should push this back. However, he doesn't get off a single shot, so the race just go to the natural. Now he only has one more remaining scan. Also, the eBay happens to be there. That gets denied, and what I thought would just be an annoying amount of damage could be game ending. He's done so much damage, killed like 12 SCVs now. Look at the worker count. It's an 11 worker advantage for Royal. Absolutely crazy. Now, because of this hard commitment to the race, he doesn't have a lot of ground, so I don't think he can really move out and attack. In fact, I think his first couple of factories are just coming down right now. So it will be a long time until he actually gets an army that's worthy of moving out. But this was a lot of damage. And what can Haya do to really come back into this game now? Is he going to really try and attack with five Goliaths, eight Vultures into a bunker and a tank? That probably isn't going to work out. We do have the scan coming down for Royal. He's going to clear out these mines. So everything going pretty well for him. Another scan goes down. Wants to make sure he doesn't run into any of these mines. And okay, he is gonna have to run. Wow, the vultures get a surround. Denies the retreat. And look at this, he didn't clear out the egg at the top. So those tanks are gonna have to fight and they just get instantly killed. And now there's vultures in the main. Tank Goliath at the natural. Cloak is gonna try and save the day, but by now he should have the energy to just scan. And this game might actually be over. I can't believe that Royal was feeling confident to move out with so few units, but uh, I hit at the perfect time, and also with the factory down here, if he can kill the factory. Looks like that's most likely not going to happen because there's a tank on the high ground, but this was a really good move from Haya. He needed that. He's now only down six workers, but look at all the SCVs that are idle. I don't know if Royal has realized this yet or what's going on here, but he's really jacked up his SCVs. Still not mining. And meanwhile, Aya, he is setting up that contain. Three tanks over there. This is going to be so annoying. I actually don't think that Royal can get out of his base anymore. Wow, he's still not mining with those SCVs. And I don't think that this is a glitched replay. And the reason I say that is the likelihood that these three tanks would be set up like this is quite low accompanied by the Goliath if this was a good replay. Like they were just, they would probably be split off somewhere randomly and then sieging up. So I actually think this is legit. Royal's just not mining his natural efficiently. He has one tank and he just taps out. That's it. So what was a genius play with the race? Great damage. He just didn't transition quick enough and way too greedy moving out with his couple tanks and got punished instantly. So well done from Haya there. I would say he steals game one and now all of a sudden he's one game away from potentially knocking out our asl champion it's also his map pick he's the one that picked polypoid for game two so this is a interesting scenario so let's get into game two and see if actually haya can do do it here and actually seal the deal yeah cruiser letting me know that actually royal forgot completely that the SCVs were idle. I don't blame him. There was a lot of action going down in that particular moment. And Aya, really nice comeback. So bottom right, Aya on Polypoid. And in the bottom left, we have Royal. And I was mentioning that retro, I think if we're going to have an 8 racks, that's going to be the map. You can also pull it out on Polypoid. You could build it on high ground here at your third base, mineral only. And if the opposing opponent doesn't scout that direction, your racks is of course hidden. It's going to be towards the opponent also. And of course you're going to have high ground if it's eight racks versus eight racks. So I think we could have a decent chance of that happening, but because there's no SCB going out for either side, it seems like most likely we're just going to have another standard opener. I wonder if Haya will try 14cc again. I've noticed over time watching a lot of these games, at least in the foreign scene, maybe not necessarily in the pro scene, but when people play greedy builds or, you know, unique builds like 8 racks, 7 racks, sometimes they continue the trend of whatever that was. So for example, 8 racks was, you know, very aggressive and they may go for an 8 racks again or they may go for a 7 racks. 
or if they open greedily with 14cc, you know, they may go back to back 14cc, but not going to be the case. It is going to be the racks and high ground like I was talking about, but not an 8 racks, it's just a normal standard barracks timing. Now, because they have high ground, somebody may be willing to build additional marines or just go for one, knowing that they have high ground, have advantage, even one versus two. Yes, they will lose two versus one overall, but you know, at least they'll in max the amount of damage they can deal. So we'll see if somebody wants to get greedy or aggro here. We do have gas follow up. I don't think that's shocking. If you're gonna go for forward racks like this, you gotta be careful. You, you know, you can't just have only a couple marines to defend. If you get eight racks, you're probably dead if you're going get gasless. But I think this is a standard follow up. Do have the SCV scouting the wrong direction for Royal. That's a bit unlucky. Meanwhile, Haya, he will get lucky this time and he will see hey, you've gone for mirrored builds. He's going to know that this is not an 8 racks because he can compare his marine pop out timing to this marine pop out timing and he sees that. And now he also saw that the racks was not building a second marine, at least while the SCV was leaving that portion of the map. So maybe he will build additional marines and try and counter what he knows to be just one marine and that's exactly what we saw second marines popped out i don't see the racks floating for high just yet so it could be three nope now he lifts it but he's still gonna have two and he knows where the racks is so he could do a lot of damage to that racks push it back instead he's got an interception on the sv and he kills it so haya i've noticed has a lot of extra gas and this is a two fact play hello he's going for the hail mary he does not want to play a macro game versus Royal this time around, and he's denied scouting. So this is fantastic for him. This is another map that's very punishing. You can siege the natural command center from around that cliff area. So we could have something like tank vulture push, but because there's no add-on, this does look like it could be vulture goliath. Those of you that watch Artosis know that he loves this type of build. I'm actually not the biggest fan of this build, so I think could sniff this out. For some reason, I thought that SCV coming back to highest base was Royal's SCV, but it's not. So he still has no idea what this is, but he will see the natural has no command center. And he is now just confirming it. So now, with no command center there, with rallied vultures, he'll know that this has to be the Goliath Vulture play. Unfortunately for Royal, because he only built one Marine, if, even if he builds a bunker, it's not a lot of DPS, but he doesn't even have a bunker. Well, I did notice... Okay, there we go. Two more vultures coming out for Haya. I was thinking he already completed his armory and was building Goliaths, but nope, those are two more vultures coming. So he's going to have four versus three for just a second if he goes immediately. But if he waits, it will be four versus four, and I think Haya will be able to, or Royal will be able to win that fight. So... Haya needs to go right now, and he does, right before that fourth Vulture pops out. Remember, four is the magic number to two-shot Vulture. Clutch repair for Royal there. He knows that this is an all-in. He just has to repair these Vultures, and he should be okay. The Goliaths, actually, I don't think those are rallied Goliaths either. Those seem to be too fast. So it does seem like it's just non-stop Vultures. And because it's being non-stop Vultures, okay... It doesn't seem like he built an armory at all. So just non-stop vultures means that Royal should hold this pretty easily. I don't think I is going to actually be able to end this game with this attack. So that means he's going to transition into double add-on. And now all of a sudden, I is just down a command center. His add-ons, yes, they're faster, so he'll be able to rack up, the t uh, rack up his tank count a little bit quicker. But with this racks floating... Royal can completely wall off the natural, and he could maybe set up a contain like Haya did last game. We do have the armory follow-up for Royal. I think this is what you needed to do, because he didn't know if it was Goliath or Tank or not. And you really don't want to have Mass Vulture versus Goliath, right? So, smart move to build his armory there. Ends up not needing it this game because it ends up being Tank Vulture. But he's in a fine position because he's up so many workers. He's been mining his natural for so much longer. He's also got high ground advantage at his third base where he can just pop or he can just sit there and it's going to be really hard for Haya to attack into. I'm surprised actually Haya is going for another attack. 
I don't think he has enough stuff to do this. And just in the nick of time, vultures complete their mine upgrade. And this has gone unspotted. I has no idea that vultures already have the mines completed. So he does need to be careful. But the way he's positioning his tanks, I don't think he's actually going to go for a push. I think he's just going to sit here. Maybe not. He's he's leading the charge with SCVs. I can't believe it. There are mines there, man. Uh, oh, there goes one of them. Goodbye. And this has got to push you back, right? There's no way you can win this fight. It's four vultures, one tank versus two tanks, five vultures. Yeah, dude, you got to turn around. Well, Haya is in big time trouble. He's down a lot of workers. He lost his first tank. He's building non-stop vultures with speed. He didn't kill a single tank. And just now he's laying mines. But the mines for a royal spot the mines being set up on the left side. So he knows that there's not that many mines in the center of the map. He's also got scan coming. So he could go for a counter if he wants. And that could be a game ending play right there. I think that could actually just outright end the game. He knows how much of an advantage he has. And he scans the first time, kills a lot of old, like a lot of spider mines. We got a counterattack. Is he gonna get into the main? Good attempted denial there, holding the ramp. And he does actually get in. Now this is a move that he does need to make. So he needs to come back in terms of econ, and he's actually dealing a ton of damage. Wow, I can't believe it actually did that much damage. And I thought Royal would instantly counterattack. I thought he would try and defend with his just his rallied units, but instead. He's going to expand himself. He's going to take his mineral only. I think that's also fine. I, uh, I don't know how he knows that Royal took a command center, but he's going to match the command center. He's taking a third base himself. So interesting game so far. I don't think either player can really attack, but I do still like Royal's position a little bit better. He's got better tank positioning in the center of the map. We can see that the tank count for Haya is really high. But it's kind of just defending his natural and third base. He's not taking priority over mid right uh, to allow him access to get, you know, mid right or top right. So I still like Royal's position here. I also like that he's got his barrack still alive in a good position to spot. And somehow Royal closed that SCV gap and it's now back in his favor. Also something I just remembered was that armory was thinning for Royal. You know for quite a long time so his plus two could be coming pretty soon i don't remember seeing a starport in his main so i could be wrong well there's the spinning army that i was talking about but i don't notice the starport i think his starport just went down in his main right now and we do have actually five factories for high so that's going to be a lot of production for him versus just Three or f oh, actually, that's not a that's not a starport. That's a, a factory also. So we've got five fact versus five fact, mirrored builds, mirrored third base timings, mirrored worker count, kind of mirrored everything right now. Supplies are pretty close too. It is slightly in favor of Royal, I, I think, simply because he has more vultures. But everything so far leads me to believe that we could be going into an epically long game. Starport for both sides. Wow, everything is just identical after the opener. That's crazy. So because the factory counts are so high, I don't think anybody should be willing to risk a bust. You know, these days I see a lot of players going for bust with Science Vessel and D Matrix, but because the factory count has been ramped up so quickly, and because it is polypoid where you have high ground on both sides. I think the best case scenario is try and just set up priority in the center of the map like Royal's doing right now and just take your bases. And if you ever scan and see that, hey, the opponent has overcommitted to a, posi a certain position, then try and bust. Now, this is kind of what I was talking about. He does realize that Royal, Royal is spread way too thin he has six tanks up here. He's going to try and pop one of them, but I guess because the mine spotted, instead he's going to back them off. I'm just posturing from both sides. It's like Royal's going to be taking his mid-left base pretty soon. But where do you attack as Haya? I think... Okay, actually he's going to go through the center. He has realized that the vultures are out of position. All those tanks at the top middle are out of position. There's only three tanks here. Can Haya do it? He's got a good mine. 
connection right there eliminates the tank. There are a lot of tanks left over for Haya too. He does need to be careful to make sure that no mines connect. And look at that. He killed all the vultures, all the mines, all the tanks with almost no losses. Royal's got to scramble to get into position here. He scans. He sees there's nothing up here. If he goes to the bottom side of these minerals, he can pop the SCVs. SCVs are going to be pulled off right now in desperation. Haya may have overcommitted here. Maybe. Maybe not, though. There's not a lot of support for the tanks, but there are so many of them. Okay, there goes that tank. And we've got six tanks just blasting this command center. It's a forced lift. Royal, he's back on two bases. He never took mid-left. He's instead just going to reposition this, this command center to mid-left instead of having a fourth command center. We've got science facility done for Haya. See that armory's instantly upgrading, so it's plus two's coming, I guess. So Haya, even though supplies are even, and what seems like kind of an even-ish game, he's in a favorable position right now. We actually have a race switch right now. This could completely catch Haya off guard. Oh, wow. Mines connect and pop two more tanks. What is going on? Haya, he's owning this game. I do think he needs to get a fourth base because he does not want to be down gas. And Royal is going to be taking mid-left. But other than that, as long as he can keep his barracks alive for vision, make sure that Royal can never set up a you know, a favorable engagement out of sight. This looks like a really good position for Haya right now. He does need to be careful to make sure he doesn't die to race. There is a single Goliath here, and we do know that a couple of races are being built from, from Royal. Now, I don't know about this. It does seem like Haya is going to try and make it happen. He's going to try and go for the Hail Mary. Nope, instead, he's going to push out to the center. And now he's got priority of the center. He's denied the mineral only. And also... Royal now has to try and defend mid-left. Masterclass play from Haya right here. This is exactly what she should be doing. Just draw the units out of position. And Vultures will spot that mid-left has been taken. Oh, it those two Vultures and die. He's actually going to rack up some kills. That's a lot of Vultures for Haya right there. If he can swoop them around into the mid-left base... He could rack up a lot of kills. He could also use them to try and bust this high ground. He, he sees the tank count. He knows that all the units were at mid-left. Okay, but does he know that this is... Oh, wow. Royal instantly pounces after unseaching those tanks, and he will be able to clear out these tanks, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there goes a few of them. None of the vultures are in time. And what was a good contain, I guess, just sat there a little bit too long. Kaya loses every single tank, but he does trade, I guess, tank for tank there seemed like five or six went down for Royal, about six or seven for for Haya. So kind of an okay trade, but he did lose a lot of his Vultures too, so supplies are going to reset. Now Royal has cleared up the contain. He's up gas now. Bottom middle just now complete, so Haya will be able to recover that cast, but seems like we're going to go into another kind of an evenish spot, but Royal's up 15 workers, so that's a big advantage in terms of econ. I'm trying to get a count on his factories. It looks like it's around like seven for him, whereas I think also Haya has seven. So the factory count, still identical. I was expecting there to be more for Royal since he has so many more workers, but not going to be the case. There's that vessel I was talking about. No D matrix though. Instead, he's just going to bulldoze his way through these three tanks easily. And you got to remember, Royal, oh, actually he's got Vulture with the counterattack to mid-left. A lot of damage there. The tanks... If they, can get, if they can deny the ramp, he doesn't have to get tanks into the mid-left. He can just get vultures in here and rack up a ton of kills. And that's exactly what he's done. He's dealing so much damage to the SCV line. Tanks cannot get up there and save the day because these two tanks are denying that. That tank on the low ground... Okay, I guess there's more tanks there. These tanks actually get denied. So what was a good move from Haya ends up wiping out all the SCVs on the left side, but it will eventually get cleaned up. Look at this, bottom middle is fully up and running for Haya, so he's got his four. Wow, he's back in the center of the map. He knows all the units are at mid-left again, and he's trying to set up another contain. I think this is very smart. He needs to make sure that he secures this portion of the map so that none of the units can get to the bottom middle. Oh, that tank at the top side. Doesn't end up taking down the tank because of the clutch D-Matrix. The plus two power spike is kicked in for the tank, so now it's a dangerous moment. For both sides you gotta be very careful with your tanks and another massive move to mid left this time it's four tanks 
Still a lot of Ultras here. Again, the, the SCV count is going to be reset. And I don't think there's enough to actually deny... Oh, never mind. There's a tank at mid-left and ends up taking out all the Vultures. But look at the supplies. That's why it plummeted. I was wondering, why are we down 40 work, or 40, 40 supply? And there's the answer. The Vultures go to bottom middle and kill everything. Now, Royal in the complete driver's seat. He is just at a massive eco advantage, massive supply advantage. And he's secured all four of his bases. Hi, a little bit slow on the gun with the vessel. I think he's lost his opportunity to bust now. Those tanks are going to die. And wow, Royal recovered very well after losing his mineral only. He's got such a huge supply advantage, such a big eco advantage. I guess the one saving grace is with the main and natural basically mined out. Hi, it doesn't really need 70 workers, but in TPT, you definitely don't want to be playing on two base. That's just, you just don't want to be doing that. You really want to have a lot of bases, at least to be able to mine the gas. Because the real powerful units in, in this matchup are, of course, the tanks. You need a lot of gas for that. And look how many units there are for Royal. He crushes this. And that opens up access to that bottom middle base. He can just put off five or six tanks there. And I don't think there can be really any counterplay. Again, another Vulture run by. To mid left there's a lot of vultures actually 10 vultures okay vulture scrambling in for royal i think he'll hold it again this time the attack is not going to get as much damage as the previous one good mind connection once again so glides in the tank but again it, it it's just not enough damage yes he killed like 10 workers but you know there's quadruple command center royal could build four scvs at a time if he wanted single race. I don't even know how it gets a kill here, but it gets an SCV kill. And now we're up 60 supply. Remember, there is the, that vessel right there, so he's going to have double D matrix, I think, and he should be able to plow through any position he wants. This is such a hard position for Aya to be in. You have to, you have to secure the top side of the map, because if you don't, you're never going to get the top right corner. But you also have to defend the middle and also have to defend the bottom. And Royal knows that. He's going to go for it. There's the D Matrix as expected. There's just so much stuff. This could be the game ending move. Well, maybe not the game ending move, but it's going to give Royal a huge lead right now. There goes a lot of tanks. I am not giving up just yet. And there's the fifth command center for Royal. He's going to start taking top left start splitting and you do now see dropships coming out and when you're down supply like this down eco and you have to cover the top middle and bottom side of the map drops are just gonna be so effective because you can't have your defense everywhere plus in your main we also see there's no turrets and I'm sure Royal has scanned that so all he needs to do now swoop around the top side of the map go to the right side and come directly into the main and I think that could seal the deal have a couple vultures trying to deny bottom or deny top left but that's just not going to happen that is a lot of drop ships it is just four i would say four is clearable with rallied units out of your factory plus scv but once you reach like six that's when it starts becoming an actual doom drop and you're just not going to be able to clear it so i think that's what royal's waiting for you may also be waiting for Hyatt to overstep somewhere and then instantly counter with the drop. So we've got the clearing of top left. That base is fully royals in just a second. And I see that the rally point has loaded up all those drop ships. So I wonder where he'll go. He's got a lot of options. He can go to top right and then come down to bottom, uh, bottom right. He can also just go down to bottom middle and just directly drop there. I think I only saw two turrets and three tanks. But you risk running into tank plus SCV when you do that. And SCVs are quite strong. So because of that, I don't think he'll go there. But I could be wrong. And it seems like those drops must have gotten scanned. Okay, well this is interesting. There's like four drop ships for Haya. Is he going to try an elevator into the main? With tanks supporting them on the low ground? That is that is a ton of drop ships. And that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to lead the way with the, with the Wraith. But this is only three 
three drops are together, he just gets instantly countered, and that means that this drop was a complete fail. He tapped out, he knows that he can't win this game. But well done from Royal. I actually thought Haya had it after his containment on the on the mineral only. But that was a really good bust from Royal. I like how when he unseized, he instantly went. Because he was facing a Terran player that had Arax floating over top. So Terran saw the unseized. So if you're going to make a move like that, there can be no hesitation. you got to unseize and go. So well done from Royal. I think what kind of did Haya in was... He kind of stuck around 55 SCVs the entire time. He never had an overwhelming econ. And when he lost bottom middle, he got reset, what was it, down to 38 SCVs. That's a really low number in TVT. So I think if if Haya had have done what he had done, but had bigger econ, he may have been able to actually take that game. But well done from Ro. He strikes back. And we've got a series on our hands, boys. It's one to one. It is now the final map, and it is retro. So let's get into game three. So, in the top right, we have our red Terran. It is Haya. And in the bottom left, we have one and only, it's Royal. And I really do actually like Haya's play today. I think that there is a good shot that he could finish the job here. Actually take down Royal. Remember, this was the map that I was I was saying, if we're going to see an 8 racks on, I think this could be it. But we will have to keep that in mind. Um, that this could be a, a quick game. With it being crossbon, if somebody eight racks is, you know, it's not going to be ideal. But I don't see any SCV movement. I guess we're not going to have eight racks this time. It is most likely going to be normal opener. Now, because Haya went 14 CC into normal build in the second game, I wonder if he'll try and play normal again, or if he will try and get greedy here and go 14 CC. I actually would like to see him go 14 CC. And I think if I was Royal, I think Gasless is the move here. I think if you face somebody that goes a normal opener, you're going to be feeling good with Gasless. If you face a 14 CC, you're going to be feeling all right with Gasless. So I'd really like to see that from Royal. And no way. Is Royal going to be the one that 14 CCs? It looks like that's going to be the case. Meanwhile, Haya, Barracks coming down. Gas coming down. Okay, he's got a really quick gas. It was like 136 gas. That's the uh, rush levels of quickness. So he's going to have a really fast factory versus this 14cc opener. And we did see him go for a continued mining of the gas last game. So I guess this could be potentially an all-in here if he can scout this 14 cc fast enough was he really gonna go cross scout no way no way not only is he gonna see the 14 cc he finds it on the first scout and that will give him the opportunity to transition this into an all-in if he wants to he will have only pulled off of gas for a short period of time there's the factory Actually, I don't think he's pulled off of gas just yet. He's still mining gas in his main. Okay, so we're going to have a full all-in here. I love it. I love to see players try and punish this 14cc. Whenever I try and punish it, I actually don't have very good success. But players like Shiny, they're really good at punishing this move. It is cross pawn though. So that does make it a little bit more difficult. But Rose going to come in here and see, hey, dude, you're mining more gas. This looks like you could be all-inning me. And he's right. This is going to be an all-in. I wonder what type of all-in is it going to be. Is it going to be a second factory? Is it going to be a proxy starport? Still don't have any clear signal. We do know that it's multiple marines. It's three marines. And anytime you're building three marines, it's pretty all-in. And it's proxy starport. Okay. We've got instant add-on for the tank. It's going to be tanked port. Obviously, I'm highly interested in how this will play out because I play tank, uh, tank port every single game. The SCV spots it. So now he knows what it is. 
And this is a rough situation for... Oh, no. He's going to kill the Marine? And he's going to kill the SCV? Well, I can tell you that this was not supposed to happen. He loses the SCV. He loses the Marine. Port is proxied with no SCV. No backup SCV. So this was already denied here. Royal can do almost anything. He can go two port himself. He can go three fact vulture Goliath, which is actually what I think he should go for. He knows that the tank count is going to be low because you can't support two fact and a, and a starport. And look at this. He just built continued Marines. So this, this starport just has to be denied. He can't save it. Uh, this could not have gone worse for Haya. Gets scouted, loses the SCV, loses the Marine. No way. Yeah. Okay. Ends up I thought he was going to lose that again, but with the tank having been sent across the map, seems like he will actually be able to complete this starport, but that was dangerous. Now, <laughs> look at this move. This is something that I didn't consider. You know that the guy's building tanks, you know that he's rallied, and you know that he's not going to build more Marines after the first three or four. So... <laughs> We've got a four marine counterattack, no stem, no range, no anything. He's just gonna go for the backstab here and try and get damage done. And I actually think that this could be what wins the game for him. If he can somehow avoid the tank that's rallied across the map right now, he just waltzes in and will kill a lot of SCVs, or he could just engage. Four marines are gonna beat a single tank. Yeah, is like, what the hell is this, dude? Why are there four marines here? The tank does have additional range, but this forces the focus of Haya on that. And as he's focusing on that tank, Royal just pops out with Marine tank attack, kills one of, or kills all the Marines there. All that's remaining is this single tank and Wraith. I think he actually killed one of the tanks also. So, oh no, oh no. Wraith versus Wraith. Yeah, too many Marines there, or too many SCVs there, I mean, to repair. But now he's got his Siege set up, he's got his Bunker set up, and he's got Turret. There's no way that the tank can push forward, and and high is all in. Because he's had to pull so many SCVs to complete that Starport, it's not like he has Command Center or Econ as a follow-up here. Wow, Wraith Falls. And after the Wraith Falls, he knows that it's over, so Royal... After losing game one, strikes back in game two and three, ends up taking the series. I did like Haya's build here, but unfortunately nothing went well for him. The starport gets instantly scouted. The four marine counterattack drew the attention there and Royal knew that, instantly pouncing on the contain. Absolute genius play there. But I think if they were to rematch, I do think Haya could have won there, but not today. Royal does move on, so congrats to him and Whoever comes out of the bottom side of the bracket for him, it is going to be a tough matchup if we could get a look at the bracket. Yeah, so looking at the bracket, either way, or either person that comes out of the bottom side, Snow or Sock, it's going to be really hard. Snow, Master, and PBT, but Sock is actually my favorite TBT player. This guy is so good, TBT. Every time I watch him play, he, he's just amazing. He's always on top of his game. So I think Doc, actually, if he could get past Snow, does have a good chance taking down Royal. And of course, I would take Snow versus any Terran. That's how good his Protoss is. But that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another StarCast TV cast in the near future. Snow versus Sock. That should be an exciting matchup. So you definitely don't want to miss it. Take care.